Right, question 10. I'm not even going to attempt to say the word. Is a powerful reducing agent? And then we have a nice picture of it. Okay. The ligand um, has an aromatic ring. State the feature that provides stability to aromatic rings. It's the delocalised electrons. That's all the places you're going for that one. Okay. Write the electronic configuration in terms of sp and d orbitals for the cobalt 2 plus in this complex ion. Okay. So cobalt is over here. I obviously just went and pulled out the the data book question for this one, or the data book for this. Um, so we've got 1s2, there's your first level gone, and then we've got 2s2, there's this lot, uh, 2p6, that's that gone, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 3d7 okay however that would be for just cobalt and they want a cobalt 2 so cobalt 2 would be remember our power is the filling the weird bit in here is this bit that this comes out first so we would have 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and you could write 4s0 if you wanted to but i just generally leave it out um 3d7 Okay. Um, your big long word can be dissolved in petroleum ether to produce a coloured solution. Concentration can be determined using colorimetry. First stage is to prepare a calibration curve. Describe fully the procedure required to obtain results. So what I've done is I've pulled again this. So this is the mark scheme. This is the mark scheme for this. Um, and the reason I've pulled it is because they have got the same thing that they've said before. So it's four points for the two marks and you need two or three of them correct for the one and you could have written this in lots of different ways so it's all very clear what they're what they're asking for so we need to start with standard or accurate solutions of very carefully known concentration um, and you would do that by a preparation by dilution you would then use the correct filter and you would have to have a blank so that's important they're saying that you're going to have to use that as a as one that you're going back and forward recalibrating to and then finally you plot it okay so these are the four points and if you've not got these four you've not got the two marks okay second stage is to determine the concentration of a sample describe how this would be carried out now that's a little bit simpler but it's still going to be two parts of this to get the one mark so you're going to have to basically take take the measurement and that's going to be either absorption or transmission depending on what you'd set up Okay, so you take the measurement from the sample and then the really important thing, you then take take to graph. Okay, so what you're doing there is, if this is your calibration curve, oh, that's a bit, okay, um, and this is, your, this is your known concentration, so this is concentration along the bottom and this is absorption, say. Um, then if you have a point that comes here, then you would read that down and read off the concentration. Okay, so that's the two marks as you have to plot, take it and then take it off the graph. I think there is a possible other mark in this, not the one that's been given, but just be aware of. If you don't fall on a good point on the curve, then they expect you to recognise you might need to dilute your sample to bring it to the right place on the curve. Okay, or produce another calibration curve is the other possibility. Name the compound produced when that big word uh, reduces propanol. Okay, so propanol is reduced to propan one all. It's actually a higher question. Um, we've then got an oxidation of this easily creates impurities in the sample. The purity can be checked using low res NMR. Predict the number of peaks that observed in low res NMR. Okay, so and it's a bit of a sneaky question because the answer is one. Because every single one of these hydrogens that you can see around here that is attached to that benzene ring has exactly the same environment as every other single one of them. So one. And that is the end of this particular paper.